Do 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 do, Dan and Sam. Do 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 do, and the fishing clan. Have a great day if nothing bites. Have a great day if Dan and Sam don't fight. Have a great day on the lake. That is if we don't get bitten by those horrible rattlesnakes. Rattlesnakes? Water snakes. Right, ladies and gents. We're here with the Sam and Dan fishing show. Good morning, Sam and Dan. It's a lovely afternoon, well, morning, in, um, well, whereabouts has our expedition taken us today? Well, we're here on uh, Crocodile Reef in Butler Lake, Ontario. Crocodile Reef? The infamous Crocodile Reef in Ontario? The same. Yes, this expedition has taken a turn for the worse, ladies and gentlemen. We're surrounded by vicious money and crocs. Crocs of all sizes, daddy crocs, mommy crocs and baby crocs. Crocs everywhere. We've got to be careful and be on our best game today, ladies and gentlemen. Will you be uh, fishing for any of these crocs, Sam or Dan? Well, we might get some crocs later, but first we're going to try and catch some bass. Some bass? Underwater smallmouth bass. Underwater smallmouth bass. I hear they're a bit different from the above water variety. Yeah, these ones are more wet. Okay, All right, that makes a lot of sense. Because they're underwater, that makes them wet. Right, that's right. And we'll be using our crayfish as bait today, so the first step is to catch some crayfish. All right, well, we'll let you commence with that, and we'll be back to Sam and Dan in a moment. Meanwhile, back at the filming station. Hello, I'm here with my assistant, Beauregard. Beauregard, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself? Well, here I am, Phil Mulgrew's assistant. I'm filming these two because they were my heroes when I was a young one growing up in Montana. A young one? You grew up in Montana, you say? Yes, I did. Really? I, I grew up in the Ukraine. You don't say. I do say. Well, there you have it. As my assistant, Beauregard. Ah, wave to Beauregard, everybody. That's right. Hi, Beauregard. Okay, back to Sam and Dan. There's Dan now. Coming out of the water. Spurt it. He's coming off. Looks like he's got something. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you know about that? Alright, here's what we'll be using for bait today. We already see a couple bass through the road. The oh, crawdad. Oh, he's a feisty little good. fellow. Dan's back on the catch. Arm, there he is. There's that little fellow, I. Alright, so I'll put him on a hook and see if we can catch something. Right, we'll see if we can find some action. Look at this. We have an escapee. A little crawdads running away from harm and danger and evil and all the the danger and evil. Back to my colleague Beauregard. Um, Beauregard, what, what's your opinion on global warming? My opinion is that we're getting plenty of global warming. Here we are in the middle of February and look at the temperature. It is very temperate, isn't it? It's lovely. It is. It is lovely. I can get on board with this global warming thing, I. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Now we see Sam here, however. He's uh, freezing and shaking. The world's not warming for you, is it, Sam? I don't know. Not at all, all right? Not at all. Oh, well. Back to the fishing action. <laughs> So here we have Dr. Smith, a scientist with the corporation. What is your opinion on global warming, Dr. Smith? Well, see, if you take the, uh, the uh, radial interference that comes with the intertropical convergence zone, what you have is the ramifications which uh, process these neutrons in the atmospheric system that create centrifugal force on all this uh, uh, low pressure systematic stuff moving around and uh, therefore you have these these uh, fractures in the uh, in the atmospheric pressure which causes um, the inertia from the separation to um, uh, influence other areas so my opinion would be that global warming is a reality but uh, an imminent reality However, not something that we should necessarily concern ourselves over at the present time. Does it affect the fishing for crocodiles or bass? Well, interesting you bring that up because uh, I believe it could have an, in, in, uh, an affection on that because uh, they're very, um, 
the bass and the crocodiles rely on their warm water, and if it gets too hot due to the... Well, they'll still have warm water, so it shouldn't really affect anything. Alright, that's good. Now back to the show. Thank you. So as we can see from our previous interviews, global warming could have a strong negative effect on our fishing and our crocodile hunting. So, beware, remember, to beware. We have a fish, ladies and gentlemen. We're zooming in on the location right now. Some serious action right now, ladies and gentlemen. Can you get him in here? Look at that bass, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, have a look at that. That is a big base of a bass. What do you think about that, Dan? Four. Tell you, that's that's one big bass. That's a fishing expedition. And that's of that. the that's of the wet bass variety, wet isn't it? Bass. The underwater bass. Oh, wet. Checking them out. There's wet. the hook oh. of the crayfish. Oh, yes. Did you estimate this fish? Yeah. 45 pounds 45 at least. 45 pounds. pounds. Now, Dan, at least 45 Dan has pounds. great experience measuring the weight of fish. He can approximate the value with his own fingers, his hands. Yeah. And he recollects... 40.2 pounds, if 40 I do say so myself. 40.2 pounds. Sam, would you have a look at that? 40.2 pounds. Monster. In all my born days, I've never seen such a fish. Underwater bass. Now, let me tell you about how this went here. She was uh, sitting by that rock. Right. And I, I went up with my crayfish and she took it right away. And then I, I set the hook and it, it didn't set and, it, and I, I pulled my crayfish right out. So I scooped down the crayfish, hooked it up again, swam beside her for a little bit and she came and grabbed it again. This time I uh, let the slack out a little bit, let it get deep in the throat and there she is. Right. That. Isn't that success. lovely? That's yeah. success, eh? What Absolute you say, Beauregard? Absolutely. Wonderful. Congratulations, Dan. Oh, thank you. Thank you. As you can see, this fish is extremely feisty and violent after being caught from its natural habitat. Beauregard, you have uh, quite a bit of experience identifying uh, fishes scientifically. Could you tell us what the exact uh, species is of this uh, this rare bass. This rare bass is a Bassius cougaris. The spots on it, if you saw it in the last clip there, are from its cougar heritage. Cougar heritage? Yes. It was descended from a crossbreed between a bass and a cougar. Very, very rare species indeed. Really? Well, that's a fascinating bit of information. Thank you very much, Beauregard. Giving the amazing, startling information we've just heard from Beauregard, this could be the missing link, ladies and gentlemen, between fish and cougar. Your cat's on. <laughs> Back to Dan, swimming around looking for those fish. What's that? It almost sounded like he said croc. Couldn't be. Now there's there's no crocs in these waters right now. No, what? It looks like he's got a croc, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. It's a croc. It it's attack? a big. Is it a big croc? It's a huge attack one. Attack of the crocs. This is a record. We better get size. closer on this one. It could be a record size. But things are going to get a bit dangerous right about now. He's got. He got. He got the mighty croc. Oh. It's a black beast. What a battle. What an epic oh. battle. But oh. Dan comes out victorious. Oh. Brilliant. Get us. Oh. Get a Get croc, Sam. String it up. Oh. Oh. Put on the stringer. Stringer. What do you think about that croc, Sam? That's a big croc. Oh, look at the teeth on that guy. You don't see crocs like that much anymore. Brilliant. Look at that. Dark beauty. Absolute. Oh, put it on the stringer. We're back on shore with Dan's amazing bass, killer bass, and we've just got some people here. Saving the children. Look at those fangs, the teeth. This is a man-eater, folks. It is a vicious beast. Look at the teeth on that thing. Ferocious. I think there's a watch in there. Did you, watch. did you take Sam out of his mouth? Yeah. <laughs> Look at him shaking. He's so scared. You, Sam was in there for three days and three nights. You boys are real heroes. We are in your debt. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do